many times, you know, uh, students will say, well, what do you think I should do next? And I say, well, just get the white covered up and then you can begin to decide what direction, you know, the, the work needs to go. All right, so basically I've got these shapes starting to form up. This is still white and I don't know how that's gonna relate to the skin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and push in some dark value there around that will, that will frame up those flesh tones. So take a little umber and a little dark, mix a, mix a, a, a middle value for those and, and lay that in. Now, a dark value around the face will make the tone suddenly look lighter. And so if you wait until the last step to paint hair, you're gonna be in trouble. So I'll lay this in here and we'll just, we'll see how that affects this guy's skin tone. And then hopefully I'll have some intuition on, you know, what direction to go with this student who's walking through this door. Now here comes the disclaimers. Obviously in a demonstration it's very quick and uh, sometimes sometimes not as great as you'd like but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea. Um, if this does uh, it's not look terrific at this point, my advice is don't panic. Just uh, keep observing your your work and you know it'll come along. All right so I've got I've got uh, most of the tone blocked in now. I'm gonna come back and clean my brush and begin to lay in a little bit more. And you notice I haven't hit one of the values. Do you remember what that is? We've got mid-tones laid in first, shadow second, and then highlights after that. So generally, if uh, just for speed's sake, let me jump in and, and hit some of, the, some of the higher values and maybe it will begin to make his face look a little bit more three-dimensional. I'll add a little bit of white into that, that medium tone and then uh, um, across the top of his eye is, is uh, some white value and then this cheek across there. I don't know if that's translating through on the video or not, but just like this white area on the sphere, I'm thinking about where the where the light's going to hit, hit that area. And then down the bridge of the nose is a lighter value. Light value in there. Across here. Got a transition area. And You've got shadow here, but then there's a pretty good sh uh, highlight on the top side of the ball of that chin. There's highlighting coming across in here. Where that, you know, this part of the mouth, well, not like mine, I've got a mustache, but uh, it's catching, catching more light, so it deserves a, a little more brightness. Probably one of, the, one of the brightest highlights is on the tip of the nose. Punch that up a little bit. The uh, the ears have highlighted strokes in them. One thing about um, you know a nice addition on a face that really brings it to life is a little bit of red. Anywhere where callus or I mean bone or cartilage comes close to the surface of the skin, it will be redder. So hopefully the top of um, you can tell my ears here. I'll pinch them. They're redder than the rest of my face because blood is running through this area. It's thin. So you can, that's some knowledge that will help you. So generally speaking, uh, the ears are gonna have a little bit redder tint and along this cheek is going to have some, some more red value. So you can, you know, if you know that that's there, you just look for it and it will bring your subject to life in a sense because we can see blood in there. It doesn't look like a corpse uh, laying there on your canvas. Also, the, uh, the lips will, will reflect a lot of a lot of, uh, of the blood value. The top lip though is gonna be a darker, a darker value. I wouldn't, wouldn't go real bright red with it, of course, but in this case, um, I'm gonna add a little umber in with, with, the, uh, with the paint. And so the top, 
the top edge is shadowed. It's a it's a shelf. There's a shelf coming out, shadow underneath it, and then it will be highlighted where it, where it catches the uh, the light on the bottom side. So right around in here, if you lay in a little lighter tone, then you can see that it's going to start to pop out as I as I put highlights across that lip. And I'll just put a little bit in there for now. We'll let her let her lay. Now I'm spotting some uh, holidays here in my painting that I haven't noticed before. The, the uh, edge of this ear. I'm going to go ahead and knock out. I used a term you may not have heard before. A holiday is a printer's term when ink does not cover the paper. It, uh, instead of working, that ink took a holiday. So I've still got some holidays here of ear values and this neck needs to come on out. At this point, I've got this, I've got this top lid here going on. I'm going to put another lid quickly on this side. And his, his eyes are starting to take shape. Now, I just realized when I back up just a little bit, I've sort of lost his smile, and I want a little bit more of a, of a smiling fellow. So I'm going to kind of work, work more of a, at least a grimace on this guy's face. Let's see. We'll move him up from, from grimace to uh, maybe happy. He's finally out of school. You know how that feeling goes. So here we go. There comes a smile. At this point, notice I'm not, I'm not worrying too much about where are the nostrils, and where are the eyelashes, and all that. Um, let me tell you a little quick story. If you think about your school yearbook being printed about that big on a page with 30 heads in it. You take a look at that picture and you will be able to identify everybody on that page even though the head is only that big. Do you see eyelashes? Do you see you know, those tiny little details? Not really. What you're seeing are shapes. And if you get the shapes right, the details you can let go to a certain extent and it will look even better because you know, those shapes are what define a person's face for you. Now to get back in and do, do tight details, uh, that can come later as, as you're beginning to finish up a piece. But in the beginning, remember what I said about you want to use the largest brush possible. And you don't want to start a painting by finishing it. You want to lay these broad strokes in, chisel it up like your sphere with highlight tones, mid values, and shadow tones on your work. Now, one last thing, and then I'll let you get to your painting. You want to use a support when you do small details. Now, a mall stick is simply a dowel rod. You can put something on the end of it if you like, but when you prop it onto your painting, and then with your finger, give yourself a support, then you can come in here and prop up and get all the detail work that you want, or you can even get you know, straight lines very easily. Most people don't know that about painting that you know mall stick is the way to go when you have any type of building or straight line like this door frame you just use a stick and run your brush along it like a ruler and a pencil it's really not a hard thing to do at all so when I get in here and finish this finish this fellow up I'll, uh, I'll probably get my mall stick out and uh, play around with with uh, highlights on his hair and and do various things but you know for those for those first few strokes just remember, you need the basic shapes. You squint down when you're looking at your image to see where the shadows are and define those shadows. Uh, lay those shadows on top of your midtone and then finish it up by hitting your highlighted strokes on your fingers. I hope that helps.